<sighs> All right, I'm gonna try to remember to breathe. There's something under my feet. It's annoying me. It is a laptop charger cable. Okay. I can already tell. <sighs> I'm like not breathing. I've not been breathing enough today. <laughs> Hello, welcome. I'm just getting started here. Um, give me two seconds. Hey everyone, welcome. So today I'm gonna to be talking about self-appreciation in phase two. And if you've never been to one of my live streams, hello, I'm Sam. I talk about phase two, I teach phase two. And phase two is what I like to say or like to refer to as a literal secret of the wealthy, which is really fucking cool. <laughs> really cool. Hey, Amel Cosmic Wealth. Hello, welcome. Hey, Valerie Rose. Hey, Changing the Mood. Hey, Phoenix Alchemy. Welcome, everyone. If anyone here is like brand spanking new, if you've never been on my live streams before, I like to run them like a Q&A. So if you have any questions about anything I'm talking about, feel free to put them in the chat. As long as they're not vulgar, political, or disrespectful. I'm adding the political one because people love to, I don't know, ask political questions, but I know I'm creating that, so... <laughs> I do my best to answer as many questions as possible. And if for whatever reason I uh, skip your question, I'm not ignoring it, I just probably missed it because sometimes there's a lot of questions, right? Yeah, super fun, right? So today we're gonna talk about self-appreciation or wherever the conversation goes. <laughs> I guess we could talk about posting on TikTok. Your post gets stuck at 500 views? Well, it's possible you have a, um, a zombie account or your content is just boring <sighs> sorry just being honest joe ed 12 joe ed 12 joe d 12 usernames are like the bane of my existence hi manina welcome so what is phase one and phase two that's a great question thank you so phase one is you're living in phase one right now everyone starts out in phase one phase one <laughs> phase one is the kind of human experience where you're very limited. You do what other people tell you to do, you follow all the rules, you go to school, you you know do what society expects you to do. It's very limiting, very full of logic, being rational, judgments, expectations, comparisons, very limiting. Everyone starts in phase one. The alternative to that is phase two, and phase two is a lifestyle. It's a way that you live your life. It's an ongoing process. And phase two is defined by simplicity and limitlessness, which is why it's a secret of the wealthy. It's something that wealthy people, when they learn it, they use it to create crazy lifestyles. That doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna have tons of money automatically, but in phase two, it's a lot easier to create money because you're not stuck with the, the stories about money being hard to make. But that's another story, right? <laughs> That is a very long, very long, I guess it's not a long story, it's just like a different topic. So, phase one, you're in it right now. Phase two is fucking fun and very simple and really cool. <sighs> Wealth is a self-love game. Yes, self-appreciation game. I think, I, I know, there's a difference between self-love and self-appreciation. Welcome, Amel Cosmic Wealth. I saw one video of you, I loved it. <laughs> Thanks, I'm so glad to hear that. Hi, Astarte Rose. Yeah, thanks. I decided not to straighten it today, so just put a little bit of texture spray in it and let it be. Okay, what is a zombie account? Just real quick, um, zombie accounts are accounts on TikTok that are like stunted, so they just don't grow. Couldn't tell you why it happens, but usually what happens is if you start a TikTok account and then you start another one, the second one is more likely to be a zombie account. It just doesn't grow. Okay. Hello, cool breeze. True wealth is the worship of Baal. <laughs> Hilarious. I guess if you want to say that. Hi, Albert Heck. Wealth is so much more than just the physical realm of money. That's exactly right. Aloha from Hawaii. Hey, King Wizard. Emily creates. So do people go back and forth between phase one and two? Yes. Um, at the beginning, you definitely go back and forth because like, you kind of forget one of the things about phase two is remembering that you created your entire experience. And it's really easy to kind of forget that in your day-to-day -day life. So that's kind of where people jump back and forth, but you never go backwards. So it's not like you enter phase two and then you slide backwards into one. It's just 
it's a practice. It's an awareness. <sighs> I'm going to try to remember to breathe. <laughs> I'm glad you're checking out my recordings on YouTube. Thanks, Cool Breeze. I'm going to put some more up soon. Just takes a little bit of time. I will put more lives up on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so what is the difference between self-love and self-appreciation? Great question. In my opinion, self-love is static. So when people get to the point where they love themselves, it's like they just stop there. They continue to practice self-love, but it doesn't expand. It's just like, oh, I'm here. We're good. Whatever. Alternatively, self-appreciation is an ever-expanding practice. You appreciate yourself more and more and more and more and more for the rest of your life, right? Till you get to a point, I guess you never get to a certain point, but as you expand, you create bigger, wilder, crazier experiences. You have more power, more creative power. I don't associate self-love with creative power. I associate self-love with not self-hatred, like the opposite of self-hatred, right? So that's kind of my opinion on the two. You could say that self-love is expansive, but it lacks, it, I just don't like the wording because it lacks the idea of appreciation. And appreciation literally means like growing. You know how we say when stocks and investments are growing in value, they're appreciating? That's why I use the word appreciation. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> okay, hello everyone, welcome. Namaste, big papa. Hi, Ines one. Thanks. I'm glad you like my content. I will save more lives on YouTube. Okay. Hey, Shogun Sammy. Okay. Surf's up from Cali. Hey, David. I'm feeling wealthy. I love that, Manina. Yes, my pleasure, Emily. Okay. Scroll safely. It just started the ebook. So much shifting already. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Thank you so much for checking that out. And if anyone here has been reading my ebook or is interested in learning more about phase two, I just launched a course. It's a small, like $75 self guided course with three modules about how to appreciate yourself, how to follow your intuition, and how to release limiting stories. So, all it's like a, it's like a starter pack for phase two that just came out. It's available via the link in my bio. So if you like, don't like books and you prefer videos and courses, that's for you. Or if you've read the book and you want that too, you can absolutely do that also. <laughs> there are no rules. Would I consider a podcast? I would consider it. Um, it's kind of funny though, cause doing a podcast on top of doing live streams would just be like extra work, but the same work, right? <laughs> So if I just record my live streams and put them on YouTube, which I'm already doing, it's kind of like the same thing. <sighs> yes. Welcome, everyone. If anyone just popped on here, I'm Sam. I talk about phase two, which is a literal secret of the wealthy. It's really cool, really interesting. You've probably never heard of it before. And I'm running a QA. and a So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them as long as they're not gross or rude. Thanks. <laughs> hey, Crypto Cowgirl. Thanks. Glad you like the ebook. Okay, solitary. I want to move overseas, but I would have to take on debt to do it, should I? <laughs> um, okay, that's a funny question because taking on debt in, from a phase two perspective is your own creation. You don't have to take on debt, but if you do take on debt, you're doing it for the experience of being in debt. So if you think of it from that perspective, taking on debt is not a bad thing. It's fine, it doesn't matter. You can create money to pay it off, whatever. Alternatively, from a phase two perspective, you could create having the money to move overseas if it's the right thing for you to do. That's something your intuition can help you with, which is why I talk about speaking with your intuition. I think you already know the answer, and by asking me, you're looking for validation, but that's what I have to say. If this feels like the right thing for you to do, then do it. Don't be afraid of how or what you have to do to create that experience. But don't do it if you don't feel like it's the right thing to, to do and you're just doing it because someone else wants you to do it. Hey, Mortgage Wizard. Just finished quantum networking. I feel much lighter as all the bad emotions are out of my body. That's awesome. That's crazy. Congratulations. And thank you for checking it out. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's very relieving when you realize that life doesn't have to be as shitty as it seems, right, in phase one. Because in phase one, it's very confusing and complicated and kind of not worth living <laughs> if I'm being honest yeah okay hey manifest with Mary Sims glad you like the book 
Hey from Oklahoma. Hi, Kim and Kyle. Hey, Brian S. Palma. Loved your book. Do you plan your goals or just going in? Yeah, I don't know goals. I hate setting goals. <laughs> Some people love goals. The thing about goals is that they're a game you can play, but they're optional. In phase one, when you are learning about goals, they're presented to you as if they are like necessary. Like, oh, you have to set goals. No, you don't have to set goals. The thing about goals, and I talked about this on my last live stream, is that the goal that you set has nothing to do with whether or not you achieve the desired outcome, right? You're either going to achieve it or not, and that's not really in your hands, right? You could try to force it, and maybe there are some things that you could force to complete, especially if they're entirely within your control, like maybe, I don't know, writing a certain number of pages in a book a week or whatever. Some things you can really control, but other goals, often, there's elements that are not within your control. So setting the goal itself has nothing to do with the results you get. It's just like preparation. It's an experience in itself. So no, I don't set goals. Everything I do is with my intuition. And that's even more interesting because when I ask my intuition for instructions and I get a deadline, which doesn't always happen. That's almost some, that's only sometimes. What is this on my shirt? Something, whatever. I only get a deadline for my intuition sometimes. So <laughs> when that happens, it's not a hard line. It's more so like, this is what I want you to focus on. Anyway, kind of rambling. User 22, I'm making steps on being an actress. Not currently. Um, yeah, I have a very kind of like complicated relationship with that. I love acting, but I almost feel like I was doing it for a reason that wasn't authentic to me. Like what I mean is I was doing it because I wanted to impress other people. But I don't know. Like that's something I really have to work through. More details about phase two. Okay. What do you want to know? <laughs> what do you want to know about phase two? Patricia, R. Cole, is it better to let life unfold or to have goals? <laughs> it looks like goals is going to be the topic of conversation today. That's fine. Uh, goals are really interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's better to let life unfold. Well, I won't say it's better. You're asking me about two completely different experiences. If you prefer to set goals, then set goals. If you prefer to let life unfold, then let life unfold. I fucking hate goals. <laughs> I hate setting goals. I hate it. I just like to like let things happen. I, I know that everything is going to work out perfectly, whether it appears to be following the way I saw it in my head or not. Setting expectations is limiting in itself. So when you think of it this way, when you set a goal, or let's say you want to make 10K in a month or whatever. You're kind of putting a limitation on yourself. Not just kind of, you literally are. Because 10K in a month is an expectation. So maybe you work to achieve 10K or you, you do whatever. And you hit that 10K. But it's possible that if you hadn't set that goal and you just let things happen, you could have hit 20K, right? <laughs> you never know. This is why expectations are always limitations. Okay. Sammy, 728, what are some appreciation tactics? Like how to put it into practice? Okay, appreciation is very, 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 very simple. And I will explain it all the way through right now. Self-appreciation has two elements. The first element is giving yourself happiness or experiencing happiness, letting yourself be happy. And the second element to self-appreciation is taking responsibility for your life. So for example, if you were to put this into practice, let's say you decide to do something that makes you happy, like going for a walk, right? Doesn't have to cost you any money, whatever you like to do, or take a bath, go for a walk, whatever the fuck it is, get your Starbucks, who cares, whatever. If you're gonna appreciate yourself, you're going to take that action, or you can just sit, you don't even have to do anything. It's just, sometimes it's fun to give yourself happiness by doing a certain action, right? What you're gonna do, is allow yourself to feel good in the moment. A lot of people, when they do something they enjoy, like get Starbucks, they get the coffee and then they're immediately thinking about the next thing they're gonna do, immediately. <laughs> like they haven't even paid yet and it's like, oh shit, I gotta get to work soon, I gotta finish this project, I gotta blah, 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 blah. They completely skip over the experience of giving themselves happiness. Where, they, where you literally sit and you were just like, oh, this feels so good. I'm so glad that I got to do this. I love Starbucks. I love this coffee. I created this coffee. I created Starbucks. I created the money that I used to pay for it. I created the cup that my coffee is in. I created my car that I drove here with. I created everything. 
That's the radical responsibility element. So giving yourself happiness and taking responsibility for your experience. That's self-appreciation. Just do that as much as you can. <laughs> and it expands. All right. Valerie Rose, when did you realize you needed or wanted to change your self-appreciation on your self-care and body? <sighs> that kind of unfolded. It just unfolded recently, honestly. It was something I started to become aware of. So I was never really aware until recently of the fact that I am responsible for the way I look. Obviously, like I'm responsible for how I dress and do my makeup, but what I mean is I created my physical body. I created my shape, I created my features. It has nothing to do with genes, nothing to do with like anything. Food, all of that is a victim story, right? Oh, I just have bad genes. Oh, it's just the food. It's the food in America. It's making me sick. Those are phase one stories. <laughs> it's just made up, right? In phase two, you have unlimited power. You created the entire experience, the experiences within you. So everything you perceive, you've created. You made the choice for it to be that way. Maybe not like consciously as a human being, but your consciousness, your intuition chose it for you. So it was just recently that I kind of realized that I look the way I do because I chose to look this way. It just kind of happened, which was really fun and really interesting too. Oh, hi, intellectual ho. What's up? <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you appreciate my vibe. How did I get this way? <laughs> Trauma. <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> I actually was really miserable. This isn't, I was not always like this. Over the past like three years, I was fucking miserable, really dark times and <laughs> really dark times. But this year I've really started to practice new things. Like uh, I did some shadow work that I kind of developed myself, which worked really well. And then I started using phase two, which I learned from my fiance. I finally put it into practice and it just changed my fucking life really recently. So thank you. Solitary, how long is the audiobook? It is two and a half hours long. Okay. The audiobook is two and a half hours long. And if anyone's wondering what audiobook I'm talking about, it's available via the link in my bio under the ebooks button. So you get the ebook and it comes with an audiobook. All right. Hello, B B G. B fit. <laughs> okay. User 898, can you please retell the laptop story? Yes, I can tell the laptop story. So for some context here, and sorry, I'm gonna catch up on comments in a minute. Maybe we can cease asking questions until I'm done with this story and then it'll be way easier for me to keep up with questions. Sound good? Okay. You can comment, but if you have a question, just wait a little bit till I'm done. Okay, so the laptop story. My fiance Andre was mentored by this guy named Peter 13 years ago three year long mentorship, Peter died in 2013. Not that that's relevant, it's just he's not alive anymore. Peter taught Andre about phase two and Peter lived in phase two for most of his life because he was mentored in it in his 20s by a man named Kevin. What Peter experienced during his mentorship with Kevin was pretty crazy. What actually happened, and this story is all in my ebook in detail, I'm gonna kind of like skip through it, but when Peter was being mentored by Kevin, he was broke as fuck. Totally broke as fuck, could not get a job for months. And when he finally learned his lessons that he was supposed to learn from Kevin, which he just like struggled with for a long time, what happened was his money situation changed like immediately. He started getting all these offers from people that Kevin knew to do work for them for thousands of dollars. Like for example, go to the store and get these groceries for me and I'll give you $2,000. This was in the 1950s. So it was more like, a couple hundred bucks, but it would have been the equivalent of $2,000 today, right? Crazy money for simple tasks. Crazy, right? So anyway, that was Peter's experience. And when Andre was being mentored by... Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm telling the wrong story. <laughs> I was telling the envelope story. Okay, this is the laptop story. Let me start over. <laughs> I just really wanted to tell the envelope story, I guess. Okay, the laptop story. So when Andre was being mentored by Peter, he was a freelancer and he worked from his computer and his computer died. It just like shit the bed, he needed a new one. 
And so Peter was over at Andre's, or Andre was over at Peter's house rather, and Andre was complaining about the fact that he needs a new computer. And Peter's like, why the fuck are you complaining? Just go get a new computer. I don't see why you would sit here and complain about something that you can fix immediately. And Andre's like, well, I don't really have the money for a new computer. I have like $2,000 in my account. I don't, I like, I, I don't want to spend all of it on a computer. But Peter's like, shut the fuck up. We're going to the laptop store. So they go to the laptop store, the computer store, and Peter picks out <laughs> a $3,000 computer. And Andre's like, Peter, I don't have $3,000. And even if I did, I wouldn't want to spend all of it at once, like on this laptop. And Peter's like, shut up. You're getting this computer. So Peter brings the computer, the laptop to the counter and tells Andre to pay for it. And Andre knows he does not have the money in his account, right? So he's like shaking and he swipes his card and it's declined. <laughs> Obviously, right? And he's like, Peter, I don't, I can't buy this laptop. Peter, I can't do it. <laughs> and Peter's like, get the fuck out of the way. Cause he's this old man, right? And he takes Andre's card and he swipes it and it goes through. <laughs> it just goes through. So Andre was able to charge, or Peter was able to charge $3,000 to his bank account, which had $2,000 in it. There was no problem. It went through and Andre walked out with a new computer. Now, some of you would be like, well, that's a big fucking problem because now he's overdrafted by $1,000. He was overdrafted by $1,000, but that same exact day, he got three new clients and it covered the overdraft fee and then some, right? So not only did it go through where if anyone else tried to charge it, it would never have gone through. He created the money to solve the problem immediately, same day without even having to try, right? So this is an example of how money kind of works in phase two. It's not as, what's the word? It's not as like serious as it seems in phase one. In phase two, money is very much just like a silly game. If you don't have the money in your account, that means nothing. Whatever number you see in your bank account in phase two, it doesn't mean shit. Because money is just, it's a limitation. It's an illusion. That's the laptop story. <laughs> hey, Laughing Truth. What's up? Hey, Kip. Thanks for checking out the book. Hey, fairies in the attic. Thank you. I don't do well with goals. Hey, Noble Creations. <laughs> Am I aware of how ridiculously good looking I am? Sort of, yes. <laughs> Manina, do I ever feel disconnected from intuition and don't receive instructions? No, because my intuition is me and your intuition is you. You can't ever be disconnected from it because it's literally always there. It's like trying, it's like thinking you're disconnected from your ego. That doesn't happen. Your ego is you, right? <laughs> um, I don't agree with setting daily goals. I still think that's ridiculous. I mean, you can if you want to, but I would never set daily goals. Because, <laughs> like, why? I like to do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Okay. Oop. The triad of limitations is literally setting goals. I know, right? Exactly. The triad of limitations. <sighs> people are not lazy. You're just judging. You're judging people as lazy because that's something you refuse to accept about yourself. Goals with no appreciation versus appreciation and let the universe set your goals. Yeah, exactly. The universe knows exactly what you can accomplish or your consciousness knows exactly what you can accomplish in the time period. That's why when my intuition told me to write a book in two weeks, it told me to do that because it knew I could do it. And I don't know if I would, if I hadn't asked my intuition for those instructions, it probably would have taken me two months to write the book because I wouldn't have believed it was possible or I wouldn't have worked I don't know, on it the way I did. Not that I spent tons of time. It was more so like, it helps me avoid overthinking. Okay. <laughs> Patricia, R. Cole, can you explain more about what you mean when you say take accountability for your life? Yes, it's very simple. You created your entire experience, literally everything. Nothing is outside of you. Everything is within you, but it appears to be outside of you. Your senses like your physical senses your eyes your vision your smell your taste your hearing your touch your senses are the outer world so it's not that you're touching the outer world your senses are what allow you to have the illusion that you're in an outer world the things you can see are on your eyeballs 
The things you can touch are on your skin. You just created this illusion of time and space, but it's all inside you. It's crazy, right? You created literally everything because it is being projected or appears to be projected outwards. Which is why there are literally no fucking limitations in phase two, because you can create anything that you desire to experience. And what you desire to experience is determined by your consciousness, which knows no limitation. <sighs> yes. Thanks. <laughs> yes, that's the story for the laptop. Solitary. Just bought the book. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that so much. I can't wait to hear what you think about it. Okay. I'm laughing so much. I know. Isn't that a crazy story? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I narrate the audiobook? I do. Yes, the audiobook is narrated by me. Hello from Argentina. Hello, G5 Digital. Uh, okay. I'm praying to calm VP. Please talk about one first steps. What do you mean? Like phase one first steps? Oh, there are no steps in phase one because you're already in phase one. You are literally in phase one right now. Hey, Monroe Queens. Sam, have you ever had problems with having anxiety? How do you deal with anxiety? Yes, I've had problems with anxiety. Okay. What do I say about anxiety? I'm also trying not to burp in your face. <laughs> Hold on. Mm. Okay. How do you deal with anxiety? Anxiety is energy in motion, just like literally any other feeling. Keep this in mind. There is only one feeling and it is emotion. You create different feelings like happy, sad, angry, frustrated by the stories you tell. So if you're feeling anxious, that's just energy in motion, but you're telling yourself the story that you're worried and something bad is going to happen and you're concerned and you're stressed out and stories that make you feel anxious, right? It's just energy. So what I would do when I had anxiety was give myself space to literally just like sit with it. I would lay down, if I could, if I was at home, I would lay down on my bed, just relax and get comfortable and allow that energy to move through my body. If I were not in a place where I could do something like that, what would I do? I really struggled with social anxiety. So what I did for social anxiety is actually kind of different because I got over it before I entered phase two and I learned all this stuff. But with social anxiety, I honestly just kind of did immersion therapy. <laughs> I took an acting class and it was very scary, but I got over my anxiety. So I would just say you should just feel through it, honestly. It sounds really simple, but give it a try. And stop telling yourself the stories. Become aware of the stories you tell yourself. Okay. I get that you don't think that's how cards work, but this is... <laughs> This isn't about phase one, the limiting phase that you're in, James. <laughs> it's beyond that. Because, you know, bank cards aren't real. Banks aren't real. Bank accounts aren't real. Money isn't real. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, Muhari Toler. What's, what's up? Welcome. Okay. <laughs> Hello from Malaysia. Hello. What is my book about? My book is about what's called phase two. Phase two is the secret of the wealthy. My fiance Andre was mentored in phase two by this guy named Peter, who was super wealthy, grew up working class in Pennsylvania, died with $50 million in the bank, and he made all his money by throwing house parties. So he basically just did what he loved to do, and it created this massive income stream for him because in phase two, there are no limits. Money comes through literally any way. You're supposed to do what you enjoy in phase two, and you can always be supported and create a living no matter what it is that you do, because you're supposed to be. So that's what the book is about. Okay. <laughs> I'm a wildflower. Do I believe in hexes or black magic that block money from... No. <laughs> that's complicated. All that stuff you're talking... is complicated. That's phase one. Hexes and black magic is a game you can play. If you want to believe in that stuff, by all means. I personally think it's really complicated, so I would stay away from it. I like simplicity. Uh, witchcraft is a game. Curses are a game, but nothing blocks you in phase two. In fact, if you believe that something is blocking you from money in phase two, you're just not taking responsibility for your own creation. You're not taking responsibility for the fact that you're blocking your money. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Am I ever allowed to reveal Peter's last name? Um, no, unfortunately. <laughs> I had to feed my puppy. We're not going to reveal Peter's last name because he has living relatives and I wouldn't want them to be harassed by a bunch of strangers <laughs> from social media. Um, his ex-wife or his wife, not ex-wife, his wife is still alive and he has kids. Um, but also I've looked up his name and there's nothing. <laughs> you can't find anything about him. He's not someone you would know. He's not, not a famous business owner. He didn't have a business. He didn't have like, yeah, there's no trail. You wouldn't be able to find him anyway. Cause like I said, he didn't have a business or a job. He just threw house parties. <laughs> That's it. Like people would come and give him checks just to say thank you. And yeah. All right. Woo. How to... Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Lukash, I need some advice on the best practices to do a proper manifestation. Okay, none of that. Main, the manifestation is not... I mean, whatever. Do you manifest things in phase two? I guess you could say that. But I don't like to use the term manifestation because it makes me think of like mainstream manifesting, which is complicated and just phase one all over. So what I would say if you're looking to create something in phase two is focus on self-appreciation and don't think about or talk about wanting the thing. Because if you say, I want this thing, you're saying, I don't have this thing. So what you need to do is become aware that the thing you desire or the thing that, I don't know, whatever, you are that thing. It is you. There's no difference. It's already inside you, but you're not aware of it yet. So just appreciate yourself. <laughs> yeah. Whew, I'm a wildflower. So does sacrifice mean nothing essentially? Yeah, sacrifice is a phase one idea. <laughs> I know, it's fucking crazy. In phase two, you don't have to sacrifice anything. Well, I guess technically you have to let go of your joy of telling yourself limiting stories, but I'm sure you wouldn't mind doing that. The idea that you have to sacrifice to be successful or, or wealthy <laughs> it's like ridiculous. It's complicated. It's vague. It's a classic phase one limiting story. Because what exactly does that mean? What are you supposed to sacrifice? Time, energy? People use that term to justify why they spend so much time away from their families working so hard in phase one when work isn't what creates your experience in phase two. Work has nothing to do with your success or your experiences in phase two. You are given actions to take, but they're never going to be like hard work because working hard all the time is like essentially what people convince themselves they have to do in phase one to convince themselves they're limited, right? <laughs> You're a limitless, powerful creator. Why the fuck would you have to physically manipulate anything in the, in the illusory world around you to create anything? The actions you take are part of the experience. You don't have to work hard to create anything in phase two. Whew. All right. How to differentiate intuition from fear. I don't know why I get this question all the time. Um, I don't even know what the question means. Like, how do you differentiate your intuition from fear? Like, how do you do things that you think your intuition is telling you, even though you feel fear? Fear comes from things you're already experiencing. Fear doesn't come from your ideas about what could happen if you're <laughs> if you take that action. Your fear exists right now. You have to it's just an, an energy, like emotional energy. So you just move through it, you just feel it. <laughs> there is no differentiating between your intuition and fear. Fear is a feeling that you have. Your intuition gives you messages. If you're feeling fear, it's cuz you want to experience fear, and that's something you have to take responsibility for. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jojo, what book did I narrate? The book that I wrote. My fiance and I wrote a book about phase two, which is what I'm talking about in this live stream. And I did an audiobook for it. Hannah, Hannah, but I cannot wake up tomorrow somewhere different just because I think so. Well, the fact that you believe that is why that won't happen. <laughs> like, come on. If you're going to tell yourself a limiting story, at least acknowledge that it's a limiting story. But I get what you're saying. Like from a phase two perspective, this sounds, or a phase one perspective rather, all of this sounds fucking crazy. But 
the whole point about phase two is not telling yourself the limiting stories anymore. You have no fucking idea what could happen. You have no idea. Maybe you do wake up in a different place tomorrow, but the fact that you keep telling yourself you can't is why you will never experience that. Hello, I'm not Zaddy. Okay. Toronto, hello. Okay. Hausa, your questions to find purpose are quite interesting. Could you give us specific examples of it? Yes. Okay, so the whole thing about finding your purpose, people think it's one thing, but <laughs> it's not what they think it is. Your purpose isn't some like big thing that you do to contribute to the world. Your purpose is the experiences that you have because the world is you, you are in the world. And so your experiences are contributing to the world. That's the whole point of being alive, to have experiences. That is why the questions that I gave for finding your purpose are about how to appreciate yourself. Because appreciating yourself has everything to do with giving yourself happiness and giving other people happiness and receiving happiness in the form of money, gifts, whatever you like from other people. So for example, when I ask myself, what can I do to appreciate myself today? Yesterday, the instructions, or the day before yesterday, the instructions I received were to eat two oranges and take a bath. My intuition must have wanted me to enjoy some fresh fruit and take a relaxing bath. And those were experiences that I don't have all the time. But in doing that, my purpose was fulfilled in having an experience that makes me feel good. And when I feel good, other people feel good because I created other people and they're a reflection of me. When I do things to appreciate others, it makes me happy and it also makes them happy. And when other people do things to appreciate me, to give me appreciation, it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people I saw in the comments on that video, the answers that they got were very vague. <laughs> I'm sure at least some of those people thought they were talking to their intuition, but they were just like, it was just their logical mind. If it's a vague answer, you can always get clarification and specificity from your intuition. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Brian S. Palma, how do you start your day to experience something new or attract your desire? Oh, well, I don't particularly, I don't do anything in particular to start my day. I just appreciate myself. It's that simple. When you appreciate yourself, you are actively expanding. That is the practice of expansion. And as you expand, you become more aware of your power, which as you become more aware of your power, you can create more stuff, right? When you are not appreciating yourself, you're extremely limited. Self-appreciation is what makes limitations fall away. So if you want to experience something new or your desire or whatever it is that you would like to experience, self-appreciation is the step. It's what you do. It's it. Morning from Malaysia. Hello. Okay. If anyone wants to learn more about phase two, I have two options for you. I'm looking at G5 Digital's question right now. If you want to learn more about phase two, there's two options. The first option, and both of these are available via the link in my bio. There's an ebook that comes with an audiobook if you like to like listen to stuff or whatever. And the other one is a course. So it's like a, a three module. There's mul multiple videos. <laughs> three modules, multiple videos about how to enter phase two, the three steps. So there's self-appreciation, how to connect with your intuition, and how to let go of limiting stories. Those are the two things that I would recommend for learning about phase two. Both of them are in the link in my bio. Whew, okay. Ah, all right. Ah, hey, Ms. Limitless. My pleasure. Yeah, happy to share. Thanks for being here. All right, let me catch up on some questions here. My intuition told me I can help you in translating your book to Spanish. That's so funny. I've had at least three people tell me that they wanted to translate this information to Spanish. And I'm like, go for it. If you wanted to explain this information to people who speak Spanish, by all means, I will not stop you. This information, is, it, it needs to be public knowledge because it's so awesome. <sighs> okay. All right. Hello, sunshine. I'm a wildflower. I feel I was in phase two without realizing it for a while and now I've blocked it. No, you haven't blocked anything. <laughs> You're good. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah. 
whatever you are talking about, make sure you take responsibility for it because you created it, right? So if you find that maybe you feel like you're in phase one, you feel very limited, you created that for just the experience. That's it. There is no ulterior motive or reason behind it. Avoid asking yourself, why am I doing this? Or why did I do this? The why is irrelevant. It's all just a limiting story. All that matters is everything you're experiencing right now, you created for yourself for the purpose of the experience, even if it's something you don't like. Like for example, I've had body image issues for a really long time. I've only recently accepted <laughs> and become aware of the fact that I created my body to look this way specifically for the purpose of experiencing body image issues, right? My consciousness was like, I wanna be a human and I wanna see what it's like to have body image issues. I wanna see what it's like to judge the way I physically look. I wanna see what it's like to feel limited because of my physical body. And so that's what I've been experiencing. Does it mean anything about me? No. Plenty of people would tell me I look fine the way I am, but that doesn't matter because I've been telling myself a different story. Whew, okay. Thanks, Sunshine Seer. It's from Amazon. Not that I love Amazon or anything. I got it a long time ago. I created Amazon. I created Jeff Bezos too. Spinach leaves. I love your approach and your verbiage. It resonates super well with me. Thank you. My pleasure. Happy to share. Glad you're here. Menina, is it limiting to keep money in your savings? Um, well, only if you tell yourself that story. But here's the thing. Money, <laughs> money flows exactly the same way as your blood in your body, right? So even if you did spend all of your money all the time and you had no savings, it wouldn't be a problem in phase two because you're always going to create more money. Peter had no savings. He just had a checking account, right? <laughs> He had multiple checking accounts and no investments because he just created a bunch of money. He spent money whenever he wanted to and he always had extra. So it's not like he saved up his 50 million. He just created his 50 million. And yeah, it wasn't investments. It wasn't savings. He generated, he created $50 million. Money is meant to be spent. If you're hoarding money, if you're saving money because you think it'll make you safe and secure, that's an illusion. Your safety and security comes from within your emotions. <laughs> this is one of the biggest misconceptions in phase one, that money is what makes you safe. <laughs> Not true. You created your money. And if you're struggling with money, it's because you don't appreciate yourself enough, right? Self-appreciation is expansion. The more you expand, the happier you feel, the more you appreciate yourself, the more you take responsibility, the more money you create. That's how it works. Yeah, so you can save money if you want to. That's an experience that you can absolutely have if you enjoy the feeling of saving money. But money is meant to be circulated and spent. Saving money doesn't give you safety. Saving money is saved for the purpose of saving it, <laughs> not for the purpose of securing yourself. In phase two, whatever you do, you do for the purpose of doing that thing. There's never an ulterior motive. Yeah. If you're going to save money, it's just to save money, like just to put it there, just so it can sit there. You don't save it with the intention of spending it on an emergency because if you do that, you will create emergencies. <laughs> That's why people who have emergency funds always have emergencies. <laughs> and if you're one of those people, sorry to break it to you, but you've been creating every emergency you had because you wanted to spend your money on, on the emergency. <laughs> yeah. Taking action and working hard are two very different vibes. That is exactly right. Whew. Fear comes from preconceived thoughts and holding on to past programming. Exactly. Preconceived thoughts are stories. So you're telling yourself stories that are making you afraid and your past. Well, I wouldn't say it's programming because nobody's programmed. Everyone accepts <laughs> the stories that they tell. Nobody programmed anyone here. Actually, this is a very important point that I want all of you to listen to. You are not programmed. Nobody programmed you. You accepted all the stories you tell yourself. This is why two siblings who grew up in the same exact environment and went to the same schools and everything can have two completely different belief systems because you don't get programmed, you choose your beliefs. What you do learn from your family and from society is how to tell yourself the stories, how to limit yourself. And when you know how to limit yourself, that's when you start choosing what stories you wanna accept. So with phase two, it's not like you're deprogramming yourself you don't have to spend months 
listening to subliminal audios to change anything. That in fact is putting your responsibility outside of you. You're blaming your subconscious mind, which that's not taking responsibility, right? Yeah, I don't even believe we have a subconscious. We have subconscious processes, our blood flows beneath our awareness, our heart beats beneath our awareness, but there's no part of you that's like pulling the strings of your life experience without your awareness. You're creating your life experience with the stories you continually tell yourself. Okay. Dylan Wernie, I've been practicing everything you're teaching and when I feel like the pain, when I feel it's like the pained me has its claws in me. Oh, I don't, I think I missed the other part of your question or your statement. Okay. Hey user 268, Valerie Rose, why are there people I con why are there people I instantly just don't like? <laughs> I hate forcing a friendship even if they're nice. Well, you don't have to force a friendship. It sounds like you're judging people, which is okay. Judging is a limitation, but if you acknowledge that you created those people, you can judge them. Judging becomes a limitation when you don't acknowledge that you did create your experience, right? You don't have to be friends with everyone. In fact, I firmly believe from experience that the people you're meant to be friends with, you'll be friends with immediately. You won't have to try. Yeah, it just happens. Okay. User 898. I really enjoy my negative emotions and experiences. <sighs> That's fucking awesome. Any tips on transitioning into positive? Yeah, so the fact that you acknowledge that you enjoy negative experiences and emotions is what will allow you to transition into the positive. So what you should do is relax, take, take a couple deep breaths, and this works for all of you. So if anyone has a similar experience or is very negative, but you wanna be more positive, do this exercise. You're gonna relax, you're gonna take a couple deep breaths, and then you're gonna say out loud to yourself, I'm willing to admit that I enjoy the feeling of being negative. <laughs> I'm willing to admit that I enjoy the feeling of being negative. And you're probably gonna feel energy moving in your body. That's the emotional energy that's causing you, that you have gotten stuck. <laughs> and it's why you keep repeating the same behaviors. You do enjoy it. You do get, you enjoy the emotional rush that you get from that experience, which is why you keep doing it. So when you admit it and you accept it and you allow that energy to move, that's when you effortlessly and naturally shift into a more positive way of thinking. So you're gonna to wanna to repeat that statement until you don't feel any energy moving anymore. Where does my income come from? Me. <laughs> it comes from me, but I guess like, I have a book that I sell. <laughs> That's funny. I write, so I sell like books. <laughs> okay, Menina, do you think your higher self has predetermined the timing of your life? Your higher self has predetermined your experiences, but not necessarily the timing. The timing is kind of up to you, right? If you allow yourself to expand and you appreciate yourself, the timing changes. But if you never expand and you never appreciate yourself, you will never have those different experiences. Your life is gonna be the same forever. Yeah. Yeah, so the timing's up to you but the experiences that you have are like, yeah. I feel so powerful listening to you. H to the S to the, to the he. Oh, H to the S to the E. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. Thanks for being here. All right, sorry, I'm kind of getting through these questions a little slowly here. Patricia, can you touch on how self-appreciation comes into you finding your fiance? Um. Yeah, I can. So, <laughs> oh, this is kind of a funny story. I found my fiance, Andre, way before I knew anything about phase two, way before. I was in this really shitty relationship and I was working as a waitress and I fucking hate waitressing. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was getting a credit card and signing up for a sales class, an online sales class. And that was where I met Andre. I believe that I met Andre because I appreciated myself through signing up for a class because I didn't want to work as a waitress anymore. So I bet on myself. I paid 2,500 bucks. I put it on a credit card. 
with the intention of learning a new skill that would make me more money. Now that's not what happened. I hate sales and I didn't make any money from it, but I did meet Andre. So the self-appreciation came in in choosing to appreciate myself through spending money on myself by believing in myself enough to make that investment. <sighs> okay. I did say, okay, well, if you see self-love as self-appreciation, then that's your choice. <laughs> yeah, or whatever you want to do. Okay. Hey, Patricia. I found a lot of phase two teachings in the past three years, but now it's just starting to click. Yeah, that's how it works. We get introduced to these things in little bits and pieces and then it eventually all works out. I read Busting Loose from the Money Game for the first time like two years ago and I thought it was a great fucking book. I loved it, but it didn't click for me until like three, two, three months ago. And that was when everything started changing. <laughs> hey, what keeps you going? Thanks. <laughs> All right. Boop, 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 boop. All right, hold on. <laughs> Hi, Bethesda. I always get so excited when I happen to sign in and you're on live. <laughs> An indulgent treat. That's really funny. Thank you. I almost just spilled this all over myself. Mm. Anyone else like Dutch Bros? Yes. Frank Bruno. Could you repeat the two things to learn for phase two? Yeah, so self-appreciation. Self-appreciate, <laughs> two things? Yeah, okay, self-appreciation, following your intuition. And the other one, like the bonus, is letting go of the limiting stories. All three of those topics are covered in the course that I just released today. It's like this little mini three-module course that teaches you how to appreciate yourself, how to follow your intuition, and how to let go of the limiting stories. That's all you need to do for phase two. Okay. Boop, 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 All right. Can you please talk more about how to start living in phase two? Yeah, okay. <laughs> to, to get into phase two, like, you can literally start getting into phase two. You can jump into it right now by appreciating yourself. It's very simple. That's it. It's, yeah. Appreciating yourself. And somebody else asked, like, what are some practices that I do for appreciating myself? These are them. Listen and write them down. To appreciate yourself, and this is how I do it, do something to give yourself happiness. You could spend money on it or not. Up to you. Could take a walk, could take a bath, could fucking do some reading, get a cup of coffee, whatever you like to do, whatever makes you happy. Or do nothing, just sit there if that makes you happy. And you're gonna allow yourself to feel the energy of happiness in your body as much as you possibly can. I bet, I would bet a lot of money that the first time you actually practice this, you'll be like, wow, I've actually never done this before. So you give yourself happiness, you bask in the feeling of happiness, and you take responsibility for your entire experience at the same time. So for example, if you bought Starbucks because it makes you happy, you're going to enjoy your Starbucks, you're going to feel happy, and you're going to think or say to yourself, I created Starbucks, I created this coffee, I created the money that I used to buy it, I created the... the the world around me, I created the car that I used to get here, I created my mouth for tasting, I created this whole experience. That is self-appreciation, and that's how you get into phase two. That's it. <sighs> Using your intuition comes into play when you start um, wanting to align with your higher experiences. Your intuition will tell you exactly what it wants you to do, not only to just appreciate yourself more, it will give you instructions for that, but what steps you can take on a daily basis to create new experiences. Make more money, create money, whatever. Ah, okay, schnoz is itchy. <sighs> Brian S. Palma, intuition, intuition self-appreciation, expansion equals money. Eh, yes and no, here's the thing. Money is a limitation. Money is nothing more than a facilitator of action, but in a phase two or a phase one perspective, money is a game you created to feel limited. 
if money didn't exist and you could just do whatever the fuck you wanted to do all the time, you wouldn't feel very limited, right? So you, all of you, created money to make you feel limited so you can play the human game. Money is nothing but a facilitator of action. It means nothing. You don't even need money to have experiences. It's like a pen. Pens facilitate writing. Money facilitates experiences. Getting the Starbucks, whatever. To create money, to create an experience and more money, that's where the intuition and the self-appreciation comes in. Yeah. So it's not like money is this real thing that is created through intuition and self-appreciation. It's that money is a fucking stupid game. <laughs> it's not stupid. I'm just like trying to emphasize that it doesn't mean anything, right? It doesn't, it means nothing. Money is a fucking stupid thing. It's a game that you created to make you feel limited. And in phase two, it's just like, whatever, money, who fucking cares? Like, I shit money, whatever. I'm not worried about it. Money has no bearing on my life in phase two. You just create money because you stop fucking worrying about it all the time. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm a wildflower. The way you described money flowing like blood in the body so I once was, it stopped a bit though. Okay, so what I think might have happened that caused it to stop was you had a day where you were like, how do I keep this going? <laughs> when something, this is very important. When something is happening, like when you start getting into phase two, you don't have to do anything to keep it rolling. It's happening. And the moment you say or think, I have to do something to keep this going is the moment you stop. <laughs> Now it's fine, you can start again, but you have to remember that once you are in the experience, it's just gonna keep going, that's it. When you worry about how to keep it going, you cut it off because you are presuming that it's outside of your control and you have to control it, that's not true. You're creating it, you're powerful, once you're in it, you're in it. You don't have to worry about it. All right. Hello. Hello, Marina Kiwi. You did create me being live and I created you to come here and watch it. I will not be taking people. <laughs> All right, I'm catching up on some questions here. Whew. Joe McCready, hi Joe McCready. Sam, I so appreciate what you and Andre teach. Life-changing information. Thank you. I'm so glad you're enjoying it and appreciating it. I'm, that makes me feel so good. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Do you think it's okay to spend savings? Yes, Heather, you can spend your savings. It's fine. Again, saving money creates a false sense of security. The money doesn't give you any security. You could lose all your money like that. <laughs> you could create yourself losing all your money. What gives you real security is self-appreciation because self-appreciation is where your power comes from. Taking responsibility. When you take responsibility for your life, it is impossible for you to run out of money or not be supported because at that point you know that money is your bitch and money will always be there for whatever you need. And if money's not there, somebody else is gonna be there with money or whatever you need. Money is a limitation that you created so you could play in phase one. In phase two, money doesn't fucking matter. It will always be there. You don't have to save it because saving it creates a false sense of security. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Ryutsuki the, her the heretic. Embrace it all. It's just an experience. Everything happens. Nothing really happens to you. Yes, it happens through you. Exactly. Valerie Rose, what advice do you have for me to stop judging? I think I enjoy the negativity. You do enjoy the negativity. You love judging. I love judging too. So what you can do, again, like I described earlier, is sit down, take a couple deep breaths, and then say out loud to yourself, I'm willing to admit that I enjoy the feeling of judging myself and others or whatever you like to judge. I'm willing to admit that I enjoy the feeling of judging myself and others. You're going to feel energy moving in your body. That is an indicator that what you're saying is true. So all you have to do is repeat the statement and let the energy move until you don't feel anything anymore. And then you let go of your energetic, emotional attachment to judging. 
Okay. Does money bring you happiness, personally speaking? No, I bring myself happiness. <laughs> I create money. Money doesn't make me happy, I make myself happy, and then the money is a reflection of my happiness. Marina Kiwi, how do we control the emotion or emotions we feel for certain situations? You don't control them, you just feel them. So, I'll explain this again. Um, because it's really important and I want to make sure everyone gets it. There's only one emotion. There's only one feeling. People think there's like a shitload of different feelings and it's like, am I angry or am I frustrated or am I like mad? Like, I don't know which one it is, but it's one of those. Complicated, confusing, phase one. There's only one feeling and it is emotion. It's just emotion. You create different feelings or you think you're creating different feelings by the stories you tell yourself. That's what makes the one emotion feel different because you're associating it with a story. So I guess if you wanted to like control your feelings, you stop telling yourself the stories, right? On top of that, you do have emotional energy in your body. So when you stop telling yourself the story and you allow your, yourself to just move through the feeling, that's when you let go of your attachment to the, the repeating emotional experience. So for example, if you get pissed off or if you feel pissed off every time your bank account goes to zero because you just paid all the bills, you're telling yourself a story that's making you feel that energy and translate it as being pissed off. Does that make sense? Is that clear? You're just feeling energy that's creating the experience and you're telling yourself a story that causes you to translate that energy as being pissed off. Is this clear? What is going on in my chat? <laughs> okay. Stop with the Christ shit. All re religious people who need to just be weird about it can leave. <laughs> okay. All right. Does this make sense? Somebody give me feedback. Okay. Repeat, please. I'm going to say it again. There's only one, emo one feeling. There's only one feeling. It is emotion, energy and motion. You feel different feelings because you tell yourself different stories, right? So if you have emotional energy about running out of money, you translate it into feeling pissed off because of the stories you tell yourself about running out of money, right? Okay, so here's what you have to do. Stop telling yourself the story or tell a different story and feel the emotional energy. So for example, you run out of money again you feel pissed off. What you're going to do is recognize <laughs> that you're telling yourself a story and stop telling the story. You can say, you know what? I acknowledge that I'm creating this and I don't have to get upset every time I run out of money. I don't, I don't have to get upset. This is not something that requires me to get upset, right? I can just experience it and feel nothing. And then you're going to just allow the emotional energy to move through your body so it doesn't get stuck. So you're going to lay down, relax, and just like shake or whatever. However it moves. Some people shake, some people like laugh, cry, whatever. After you release the energetic attachment and you stop telling the story, you change the experience. It will just change effortlessly. This is exactly how my money experience changed. I used to get so fucking mad. <laughs> Every time I would pay my bills and run out of money, i get so mad. And so I kept running out of money, right? Then one day, literally like two months ago, I was like, okay, I don't actually have to get mad about this anymore. I've just been enjoying the opportunity to get upset, right? <laughs> enjoying the opportunity to tell myself these stories. And when I stopped having that emotional reaction to running out of money, I stopped running out of money. <laughs> there was literally, there has not been another time where my account's been to zero. That's it. It's like the last time it happened was the last time I got upset about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot of questions. Okay. Is there a movie about phase two? Well... Not that I can think of. The closest one would be like The Matrix, but I wouldn't, I don't even know because I've never even seen The Matrix. Hey, nice life. 
Yes, busting loose from the money game. Yes. <laughs> Chosan, Ch Chosan, whatever. <laughs> Would you say any of this is harmful, detached, or ungrounded? Those are your judgments. You are judging what you're hearing, which is fine. You can judge it. And again, those are just stories. So if you are listening to what I'm saying and you're telling yourself a story, oh, this is, this is crazy, it's ungrounded, that literally means nothing except it creates an emotional experience for you that you enjoy. That's it. Which is limiting. Because if you keep telling yourself these judgmental limiting stories, you are stopping yourself from expanding. Is that a bad thing? No, it's a choice you get to make. But I'm just letting you know those are judgments and those are your fears. So it's up to you. It's 100% your choice. This could be harmful, detached, or ungrounded if that's the way you see it. But that's not how... I see it because I choose not to judge it that way. <laughs> I think that's clear. Uh, there was something else I was going to say. Shit, I forgot. Whatever. Menina, is there a place for logic and strategy in life? Yeah, if you like strategy, yes. Strategy is great. Playing chess is a strategic game. I don't like chess. I don't like strategy. But if you love strategy, by all means, be strategic. Same thing with logic. People get caught up with logic because they ask themselves why all the time and they try to figure shit out. That's where logic becomes limiting. But logic is also an experience. It's not a bad thing. You just have to be aware of when you are using logic in a way that is limiting you. Anytime you try to figure out why something happened, that's a limitation because everything happens just for the experience. You get hit by a car because your consciousness was like, let's experience getting hit by a car. We are not appreciating ourselves very much, so we're going to do something <laughs> to kind of like, I don't know, do something crazy. Let's get hit by a car. You just got hit by a car for the sake of it. There is no rhyme or reason. There's no why, right? Okay. Okay. Whoo! I don't know what it is. Like, maybe it's my chair. My back gets mad sore when I do these streams. <laughs> Okay. Self-love different from self-appreciation. Self-love is static. Self-appreciation expands. Self-appreciation is something that you constantly grow. Self-love, in my opinion, when you, are, when you love yourself, you just stop there. Oh, I love myself. Oh, I love myself. But you never like love yourself more and more and more. So that's how I see them as being different. Additionally, appreciation, the verbiage of appreciation, literally describes expansion. Because when you talk about stocks and investments that increase in value, you say they're appreciating. It's the same thing with you. You are expanding, you're gaining value, you see yourself as more powerful, more worthy, more deserving. That's appreciation. Amelia, Veronica, is it okay to have no idea what I really want? Yes, it's fine. <laughs> Again, you may be telling yourself a story that it's not okay. That's just a story. You don't have to know anything. Well, you do know everything. You don't have to realize that you know it. <sighs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Where do we find you if they ban TikTok? Oh, well, you can find me on Instagram. I don't, they're not going to ban TikTok. <laughs> But I appreciate the question. Um, I would actually really recommend that you all follow me on Instagram because then you'll know if I decide to do a live stream or if I cancel a live stream, I try to give announcements. So yeah, follow me on Instagram. The link is in my bio. And there's tons more content over there too. Okay. I don't like strategy. I'm an artist. I love creative flow. Same, same. Okay, uh, Igro J. Lobo, Igro, Igro, J. Lobo, how can one align with empathy so a charity program can collect donations effectively? <laughs> Suggestions? <laughs> um, okay, you create the empathy, you create the, dona the donations, you created the charity, you create the people who give the donations, you create all of it. So what you need to do is expand your sense of awareness of your responsibility. You need to appreciate yourself. You don't have to physically do anything. 
<laughs> or align with empathy, you may notice that the idea of aligning with empathy sounds very complicated. Like how, how do I do that? It's kind of like when people talk about the frequency of money, it sounds good. Like, Oh, the frequency of money, but what the fuck does that actually mean? Confusing. So what I would do is appreciate myself. If I were you, I would appreciate myself and become aware of the fact that I created all of it. And if I'm going to create more people donating, I have to feel more appreciative. I have to expand more. I have to take more responsibility. And I have to ask my intuition what steps I can take. That's it. Okay. Hey, 25AC, thank you. <laughs> Do you verbalize for appreciation? No, not really. I, maybe. I might say to myself, oh, I fucking love this. This is so great. But no, I don't focus on verbalizing. Hey, happy lady. Okay. All right. Boop, 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 boop. Emotion equals energy in motion. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Judging is addictive. Yes. Patricia Black and then Jules Johns and then Dylan Werney. Hello from Ireland. Hello. Will this be on YT? Maybe. I'm doing my best to upload as many um, lives as possible. It takes me a really long time because my upload speeds are like shitty, <laughs> but I'm gonna do my best to put more lives on YouTube. Okay, Dylan Werney, do you recommend using your intuition to know what foods to eat? Sure, yeah, you can absolutely do that. But remember, you created all the food. There's no bad food, there's no good food. Those are judgments and stories. You created all the food. Intuitive eating is definitely a thing. You could absolutely do it, just beware if you're telling yourself limiting and judgmental stories about food, because you created the food, it's, it's not real, right? Jules Johns, can you give some examples of how life is different between phase one and phase two? Yeah, um, in phase one, everything is confusing, complicated, and limiting. You follow everyone else's advice, you do what people tell you to do, you're constantly worried about what other people think, it's confusing as shit. That's phase one. In phase two, it's very simple, you focus on how you feel, and you follow your intuition. So you don't have to worry about anyone else because you created everyone else. There's nothing for you to worry about. Very simple, very fun. In phase two, you experience like tons of amazing synchronous experiences. Money becomes an effortless experience. You create relationships more effortlessly. It's just like mad fun. <laughs> it's very exciting and very powerful, which is why wealthy people use it. All right, Patricia, how do you deal with worry or fear of not having enough money? You have to move through that energy and stop telling yourself the stories. I'm worried about money because X is a story, right? Again, emotional energy is, is made into fear through the stories you tell yourself. So become of the, aware of the stories you're telling yourself and give yourself time to feel the energy. Just let it move. That's how you deal with money fear. Okay. How do you save money, BC Fit? You, <laughs> you don't. I mean, you can if you want to. <laughs> it's an experience you can have. Saving money is an experience you can have if you want to. But you only save money for the experience of saving money. You don't save for anything in particular. Because if you save for something in particular, like an emergency, you're going to create emergencies. <laughs> it's an expectation, right? You don't have to save money in phase two because you create money effortlessly. You, what's the word? You surpass the point where money controls you and then you control money. Because money is nothing more than a limitation. It's a game that you created so you can play in phase one. When you let go of all your limitations, you let go of money as a limitation also. So then in phase two, you just, money just shows up. This happens so often. It's not even like a rare occurrence. I, every time I check my bank account, I have way more money than I thought I did. Andre, every time he checks his bank account, has way more money than he thought he did. People who are working with Andre as his mentees always have way more money than they thought they did because they're not limited by money anymore. It just shows up. It appears. It's, it sounds crazy, but it's a real experience that you can have. You just have to appreciate yourself. It sounds fucking crazy, but this is why I love talking about it because it's like so cool. Uh, <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. 
Hey, Becky Conlow. Okay. Yes, if anyone's wondering what Andre looks like, uh, he uh, is on my YouTube channel <laughs> in a couple of videos. Yeah. Do I pay taxes? Um, yeah. The thing about taxes is, oh, this will be really controversial. So you created the IRS, you created taxes. Oh, wait, were you asking me if I paid? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you're asking someone else. The thing about taxes is you created them. So paying taxes is a game that you can play if you want to. If you decide not to pay your taxes, you choose your consequences and you may choose that there are no consequences. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do I pay taxes? I do play the tax game, um, but just because I'm like <laughs> a baby, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not gonna add meaning to it. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Hey, happy lady. I got your book last night. I love it already. I've never read so many pages in one sitting. Wow. Thank you. That's really sweet. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for checking it out. I'm going to screenshot that. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Hello from Algeria. Hello, Karimu. Okay. Did I miss anyone's question? Um, Jose, Jose, J-O-C-E, 111, <laughs> usernames. Do I interpret my dreams? No, because interpreting, interpreting, <laughs> interpreting dreams is just telling stories. It's making things up. You can interpret dreams if you want to. That's another game you get to play. If you love interpreting dreams, by all means do it. I don't because it's just adding a bunch of stories and meaning that I have no backing for. Okay. Are there beginning videos to watch on this? The same girl. The same M girl? The same girl. <laughs> um, beginning videos to watch. I don't really know what you mean by beginning. Like, it's very simple. It's just about self-appreciation. If you'd like to go through like all of the instructional videos, that's available. I just made a course today. Andre's in the course. He teaches like the whole thing. I just did the introduction. So if anyone wants to know, like get the step-by-step -step process for appreciating yourself, following your intuition and letting go of the stories, that's in the course that we just finished today. If for whatever reason you don't wanna get the book or you already got the book and you want something else, link in bio. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Lulu. Lu, lu. <laughs> Mauricio Inc. I absolutely love and appreciate myself, but rarely I'm still struggling. Wait, are you rarely struggling or you love and appreciate yourself, but you're still struggling? I don't know if I understand your statement. I don't know if I know what you're saying. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. What book did I write? Income Coach Diana. Yeah, it's called Quantum Networking. It is a introduction to phase two and it's got some really awesome stories in it. That's my favorite part. I love stories. So I sometimes read my own book again. <laughs> yeah. And it also comes with an audiobook, just to just to put that out there. The audiobook is two and a half hours long. The ebook is 130 pages. It's like it's in depth. I am not on a second live. Yeah, the same girl. Yeah, no problem. So um, what I would do, oh, what would I do if I were like brand spanking new to this? I would practice self-appreciation, but if you want instructions for that, um, I have some content about it, but I would definitely recommend the ebook and or the course. The ebook is a great place to start because it's very like background heavy. So you get a lot of the context and the stories. The course itself is very like action-based and informational, instructional. Check out both. Whew. Okay. User 22, what are things you like to do the most? Creating content? I love creating content, yeah. Um, also, I really enjoy writing. That's why I am, that's why I write, right? Because I love writing. And I love doing outdoor stuff like walking, I take pole class. I just do whatever the fuck I want to do. <laughs> Cause I have like no schedule. I do whatever I want. 
Brian S. Palma, do you meditate? And if so, just being. Uh, yeah, kind of. I don't really meditate very much just because I like, yeah. But when I do sort of meditate, usually I'm sitting at a coffee shop with a coffee in my hand and I'm just like vibing and existing. That's how I meditate. I appreciate myself. Okay. Okay. Where do I live in the US? I live in Arizona. Hello from Egypt. Hello. Allah. Valerie Rose. Tips for business networking when I feel I don't bring any value for my limiting mind. Okay, well. <laughs> When you feel you don't bring any value, that is non-self-appreciation. If you appreciate yourself, you cannot possibly feel like you don't bring value. So maybe stop telling yourself the story that you don't bring any value. <laughs> yeah. That's, you're making the choice to tell yourself the story that you don't bring any value. That there's nothing you can physically do to change that except appreciate yourself. You can't learn more skill, well you can. It won't help though. <laughs> you can learn all the skills you want and it still won't change the fact that you like telling yourself the story of not bringing any value. Okay. Marina, Kiwi, so we can feel however we want to feel at any given moment. Yeah, you can. You really can. Again, it has to do with the stories you tell yourself. You can be happy literally any time you want to be happy. It is in your power to experience happiness. That is self-appreciation. When you give yourself opportunities for as long as you possibly can to be happy and you don't have to do anything in particular, you can, That's we encourage you to do stuff you enjoy for the sake of the experience, but you can be happy whenever. That's self-appreciation. All right. Where do we find the course link in bio? Yes, the course is available via the link in my bio. You'll see it, it's the top button. And because we just released it today, we're doing like a 24 hour flash sale. You can save 25 bucks. Yeah. Carmilla, do you think creating good stories makes them happen? It's an interesting question. The To me, the reason you would tell yourself a good story or like a positive, uplifting story is because they're not limiting but all stories are somewhat limiting right you could tell yourself like oh i'm gonna make twenty thousand dollars next month but that's still a limitation because you could create more right so it's not that just verbalizing what you want creates the manifestation which a lot of manifestation coaches like tell you that you just sit, you just affirm just affirm it all the time no what really matters is appreciating yourself, giving yourself the ability, the time and the attention so you can expand. And the more you expand, the more you allow and align with new experiences. So those stories you want to tell yourself, like whatever you desire, you're gonna tell a story about, that's what you're supposed to experience. It's a desire, you think about it because it's supposed to be for you. But if you're not appreciating yourself, you are cutting yourself off and limiting yourself, and that's why it never happens for you. You have to appreciate yourself. Okay. Can you give more practical? You guys are overthinking self-appreciation. You are overthinking the shit out of it. <laughs> Aruno Max, you're overthinking it. You have, there are two steps and they happen simultaneously. Do something that makes you happy. It could be literally anything, even just sitting in on your couch for like five minutes, allow yourself to feel happy. Stop telling yourself the, the limiting stories and stop letting your brain distract you. Give yourself space and time to feel happy and take responsibility for your entire experience. Look around your, your home and be like, I created this. You don't have to love it, but you still have to take responsibility for it. You don't have to love your experience to take responsibility for it. You created it, it's yours. And the only way to shift it in phase two, I mean, you could like fucking bust your ass and work really hard and then pay for a new apartment if you want to do that. Or you can create yourself moving into a new apartment effortlessly with phase two. For example, 
Give yourself happiness, take responsibility, that's it. You could even do this while you're driving. You can do this literally anytime. I feel like Dr. Seuss. You can do it in a sink, you can do it in a rink. You can do it on the floor, you can do it outside the door, whatever. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I'm probably gonna hop off kind of soon because um, I want... <laughs> I'm gonna hop off soon. Let me catch up on a few more questions. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, Dylan, here's the, the question you asked me earlier. I think I got the, the other part of it. I've been using your tips to heal my body at the moment. It feels like the pained me doesn't want to go. That's you. The pained you is you. So stop separating yourself. That's you, right? You are in pain. If you feel like you can't let go of the pain, you have to admit that you enjoy the pain. You enjoy the feeling of being in pain. You enjoy the feeling of suffering. You enjoy the feeling of getting sympathy from other people. You enjoy the feeling of getting attention from doctors. I don't know what your specific situation is. You are the one in pain, so stop creating a separation because that's limiting, right? It's a story. And you have to accept that you enjoy the feeling of creating the experience. Yeah. Yeah. There's emotional energy that's stuck, which is why you keep creating the same experience over and over again. You have to admit it, accept it, and allow the energy to move in your body. <sighs> Spinach leaves. I'm so happy that you feel at home here. I'm glad you're here. Mm. I'm sure I'm going to regret, regret, regret drinking coffee at like seven o'clock. All right. <sighs> What do I mean level two, like phase two, income coach Diana? Phase two is a lifestyle. Phase two is a literal secret of the wealthy. The way in which most people, well, not most people, <laughs> the way in which some people learn about phase two is because they are mentored by a wealthy person who, knew, who knows about phase two. It's not common knowledge, but I and my fiance Andre would love to make it common knowledge. Um, phase two is a lifestyle. It's defined by simplicity and limitlessness. So it's basically when you stop telling yourself the limiting stories and you allow life to be simple and you appreciate yourself. And it just, it's like aligning with your greatest experiences. That's in this very small nutshell. That's what phase two is. You are giving yourself the opportunity to actually have the most expansive and limitless human experience possible where most people in phase one enjoy telling themselves the limiting stories because they like being limited. So. Yes. What would I recommend most? You mean like between the course and the book? The book. Um, if you've not already, if you've already read the book, definitely get the course. If you haven't read the book, get the book because the book is like crazy. And then after you read the book, you're going to probably want the course because it's like less stories Less explanation, more action. Okay. Uh, I Crystal Crystal. <sighs> Hi, how do you handle others getting consequences in your head? Well, you created those other people to tell you the consequences. <laughs> they're, they're not real consequences. You created those people and you created them to give you that information because you wanted them to give you a limiting story. So you have to take responsibility for that. <laughs> yeah. So you could say, I'm willing to admit that I enjoy the feeling of creating people to tell me about consequences. <laughs> I might like that myself personally, because I just got a little bit of a jolt. Dylan Wernie. Wernie? I'm 19 and it feels like I fear my higher self and what I'm capable of. I totally understand what you're saying. I, yeah, that's my experience as well being afraid of what I'm capable of. The thing is, that's part of the experience that you came here to have. So it's not like you can escape it, you have to accept it. You can move through the emotional energy, allow it to move in your body and accept the fact that part of your experience involves 
limiting yourself by being afraid of your potential or being afraid of your capabilities. If you were an unlimited being <laughs> and you wanted to trick yourself into being into believing you're fully limited, that's definitely something you would want to experience. You would definitely tell yourself, I'm going to be afraid of what I'm actually capable of. And that's going to keep me from achieving everything that I'm capable of. Does that make sense? Okay. I've been jumping between phases. So now it's a matter of consistent unlimited self-appreciation. Yes. Chosen self-appreciation, especially taking responsibility. <laughs> why do people, Patricia, why do people choose bad health like an autoimmune disease? So you're asking why, why is a logical question. There's really no good. Any explanation you come up with is just a story. Some people choose to be sick because they want to experience being sick, right? That doesn't mean you're going to be sick forever. You have the power to heal yourself. <laughs> you have the power to overcome any limitation that you put on yourself because you put it there, right? Don't try to figure out why. Anything you tell yourself relating to why something is happening is nothing more than just a story. Your logical mind cannot possibly give you any help. It will tell you a story and that's it. K Pete 12, is anything real? I created you, you created, nothing is real. We live in a hologram. You can even read about this in books like The Holographic Universe by jo uh, Michael Talbot, rather, not Joe Talbot. <laughs> we live in a, an illusion. Nothing is real. Everything that we created is for the purpose of the experience and the experience only. Everything is just a game. Kate's Melody, 79. When I get the $44, yes, the deal, you get both ebooks and both audiobooks. And the second one does come in January. That's correct. Yes. So you're pre ordering Quantum Cash and you're going to receive Quantum Networking immediately. And then Quantum Cash will be emailed to you in January. Hello. I am Juliana Vialba. Vialba. Hopefully I said that right. I am Juliana. Can you please tell me a little about the new course? Is it video? I've been listening to your book. Yes, the new course is all videos. It is three modules, how to appreciate yourself, how to communicate with your intuition and how to stop telling yourself limiting stories. It's more action-based and more like action-based explanation than the book, which is more stories and more background. Thanks. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. Wait, you gasped? Uh, Jose, one, 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 two, two, two. What was it that I said? <laughs> Obviously you had some emotional energy move when I said it. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Stop Dr. Seuss. <laughs> okay. Mm. anyone who's wondering about like what techniques is there for manifesting <laughs> I feel differently about it now <laughs> okay what platform do you use to publish your ebooks gumroad I use gumroad okay yes thank you if anyone is going to grab the book I really appreciate that and I would love to know what you think about it I love the book. It's amazing. This information is phenomenal and I can't wait to hear what you think. Do we need to buy the book to understand the course? I don't know. I would recommend it. I would recommend both because like I said, the, the book has a lot of context and stories, a lot of background, but the course is very like action based. So you could use the course to get into phase two, but I think the whole experience is made a little bit better when you also know what's possible with phase two, which is all in the book. Yeah. Jose, is limiting beliefs the reason why I couldn't see my future self when I was younger? Is limiting beliefs the reason I couldn't see my future self when I was younger? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Possibly. If you tell yourself it is, then yeah. 
like you're looking for a why. A why is logical. There's no real reason. Any answer you give yourself when you ask why is a logical story. It may or may not be true. You're just connecting dots that have no real connection. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Manifesting techniques. Yes, manifesting techniques. Shmi. Shmi. <laughs> Here's the thing about phase two. It is extremely simple. I don't enjoy mainstream manifesting because it's confusing as shit. It is so complicated and so confusing. And there's so many people that give like conflicting advice, which is fine. Like, some people love that stuff. They love to play the, the mainstream manifesting game. That's totally fine. I'm not bashing it. I'm just saying I prefer some phase two because it's simple. That said, in phase two, none of the mainstream manifesting applies. The only thing you need to do in phase two is appreciate yourself and follow your intuition. That is it. You appreciate yourself and that causes you to expand so you can actually experience different things. If you're not expanding, you are not able to experience anything outside of what you're currently experiencing. Following your intuition is finding out what action steps you can take to facilitate those new experiences. And the new experiences you have will always align with your desire because you chose them ahead of time. You have those desires because you're meant to experience them. You don't have to like get really specific so the universe knows what you want. That's mainstream manifesting. That's also expectations and expectations are limiting. All you need to do is appreciate yourself and follow your intuition and the things you desire will unfold because you desire them. That's it. Okay. Woo. Manifest with Mary Sims. <laughs> I'm so glad you enjoy the book. Thank you so much for checking it out. Life changing. Wow. That's a great compliment. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you need to make a children's version of phase two because I need to start teaching my little ones. That's a really interesting idea. I'm going to screenshot that. Maybe we'll make that into a book, like a kid's book. That'd be fun. I'm what Tim, I'm what I am. Oh, I am what I am. 92. <laughs> yeah, money knowledge is key. It's, it's really um, important, especially for me because money was something I always struggled with. And to finally be in the place where I can see why I struggled with it is really interesting. Really cool. Not struggling anymore. Thank God. Thank me. I am God. <laughs> okay. Teddy Jenkins can go fuck himself. I created him. <laughs> what is Seath? I don't know if I can delete all of those comments, but whatever. Okay, official Indica. I feel like I've been showing myself max appreciation lately and I'm not seeing many results, any tips. Yeah, because you have expectations. This is extremely important. Official Indica, listen carefully. <laughs> Appreciating yourself. You only appreciate yourself to appreciate yourself. You have been appreciating yourself to create a result, which is why you're not seeing a result. That's an expectation. Expectations are always limiting. If you're going to appreciate yourself, you have to do it just because you want to do it. That's it. A lot of people, some people on here even, are listening to me talk about appreciation and they're going to try to appreciate themselves just to change their life. Just because they wanna see, they wanna have a different experience, but they don't actually want to appreciate themselves. They don't want to like themselves. They don't want to feel powerful. They don't wanna take responsibility. They just wanna have a different life and it's not gonna work for them. You have to appreciate yourself because you wanna appreciate yourself. That is so, 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 so key. And if you struggle with that, if you struggle with feeling like you genuinely want to appreciate yourself, it's very simple. All you have to do is take responsibility and accept the fact that you enjoy the feeling of not appreciating yourself. You enjoy the stories you tell yourself and you enjoy the feelings around not liking yourself. That's it. It's fine. You're only doing that for the experience. Nothing more. 
So when you appreciate yourself for the sake of appreciating yourself, you will see results because you're not expecting results. <sighs> User 22, do you have anxiety from your lives? Or do you get an energy to it? <laughs> I get energy from it. Yeah, I don't get anxiety. <laughs> you totally should, Marina Kiwi. You totally should do that. <laughs> I do not believe in God. I am God. Okay. Vegas Desert Living. Hey, Queen. Thank you. You checked out the book? Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to hear what you think about it. Oh, you're going to love it. You are going to love it. Thank you so much. Okay. Ruru, how do you communicate with your intuition? How do you ask and how will you receive the answer? It's very simple. Very simple. Communicating with your intuition. The first thing I would do is find out what your intuition's name is. And then once you know its name, you'll have more of a personal relationship with it. Your intuition is you, but it's really easy to forget that it exists. So when you have its name, it's a lot easier to remember to ask it for like instructions, right? So that's it. So just like relax, take a couple deep breaths and then say, intuition, are you there? And you may feel like a tingle or twitching or something moving in your body energy. That's your intuition saying, yeah, I'm here. And then you're going to ask, what's your name? Intuition, what's your name? And you're going to get a name. You may have to ask more than once if it's not clear. Um, your intuition's voice is going to be quiet. It's not going to be emotional. It's not going to yell at you. It'll speak very calmly. So you have to listen. You have to be relaxed, right? It's not your intuition if it's yelling at you or getting emotional. That's not your intuition. That's your logical ego, logical mind. And then once you have its name and once you remember to relax and breathe, you can ask literally any question. Well, maybe not literally any question. You want to ask about the present moment. Like, what can I do right now? Or how do I want to feel right now? Or what feelings do I need to feel right now? Don't ask about the future. Don't ask about the past. And don't ask why. Those are like the three rules. <laughs> Yes, yes. Okay. Whoo! General operating designer. That's funny. I'm a wildflower. Okay, Marina Kiwi. I'm going to answer two more questions. Marina's and then one more. Sometimes I can't tell if I'm communicating with my ego or my intuition. So yes, I can just give you a couple um, points of reference <laughs> so you would know. Your intuition like I was just describing, your intuition is going to be very quiet. Sometimes it sounds like it's coming from the back of your head. For me, I can sense my intuition in the back of my head. It's never going to get emotional. It's never going to yell at you. And it's only going to speak when you're ready to listen to it, right? Your ego will yell at you anytime. <laughs> it's going to get emotional. It's annoying as shit. And it will be like pushy. So if you're ever getting a message that sounds pushy, like do this, do this, do this. It's repeating itself. That's your ego. It's trying to convince you of something. It's fine. You just have to relax a little bit more. Your intuition will speak one time. You can always ask it to repeat itself. And the other thing you can do is double check with your body. So if you're not sure if a message you received was your intuition or not, you could just say, did my intuition tell me or... Is it, did you just tell me, blah, 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 whatever it was, and you'll feel like a yes, expanding sensation, or a no, if it wasn't your, your intuition. Double check with your body if you're ever not sure. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Hey, Dodging Karma. What are the three rules again? The three rules about what? The three rules of your intuition? <laughs> what three rules? The three rules of phase two? I don't know if I referred to anything as three rules. <laughs> I guess I'll answer more than one question. <laughs> User 22, what do I think about Joe Dispenza's work? I think Joe Dispenza's work is great. It aligns very well with everything about phase two. The only difference between phase two and Joe Dispenza's work is his work is very science heavy. He talks a lot about brainwave states connecting with the quantum field. It's fascinating and I think it's real and it can be real if you believe it's real, right? 
because nothing is real. If nothing's real, everything is real. Um, but it's also a little more complicated, right? That's all, all that science stuff is very complicated, right? So phase two works the same way, but you don't have to worry about brainwave states. You don't have to worry about connecting with the quantum field. It just works and it's simple. Okay. Uh, networking. What about networking? Yes. Thank you. Official Indica. Don't ask why. Don't ask like how, why or how. Well, you can ask how, like, how do you want me to do this? But don't try to figure out why. Don't ask about the past and don't ask about the future. Ask what your intuition wants you to do right now. What do you want me to do right now? Or what would you like me to do? How do you want me to appreciate myself? And if you ask something like, how do you want me to appreciate myself and you get an instruction, you can do that whenever. The point is that's what it wants in the moment. Yeah. Ruru, yes, your intuition may be a voice, but for you, if you don't hear any voices, it could just be your feelings. Um, you can ask your body questions. So you can, again, with the sensations, sometimes, well, for you, it may be different, but generally what I hear from a lot of people is they ask their body questions and they get a yes, like an expanding sensation as a yes, and a no is like a shrinking backward sensation. So you just relax and you ask a question, a yes or no question. Um, well, an example of a yes or no question, like, I don't know. Do you want me to take a bath right now to appreciate myself? Yes, no. Yeah, that's one possible way of communicating with your consciousness. Mm -hmm. I said, don't ask about the past. Yes, that's correct. The past is irrelevant. Did I just say something about the past? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Manifest with Mary Sims. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm going to screenshot that too. Cool. All right. Last question. Yes, I agree with you, Patricia. <laughs> Joe Dispenza is so cool, but his exercises are very complicated. <laughs> okay. Last question. Do you recommend journaling for those who are in their self-appreciation journey? You can if you want to. I don't journal because it's a logical process. Very like logical brain figuring out why, like why, 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 why am I like this? What do I think about this? That's why I don't journal. If you like journaling, by all means journal. I just wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. With Nick, are you always creating? I love questions. Ah, I could do this forever. I'm just tired and hungry. <laughs> I'm like a toddler, just getting antsy. Yeah, you are always, I will leave you all with this. I will leave you all with this. You are always creating. Everything you are experiencing right now, you created and if you pay attention, you will find that everything you're experiencing is what you have an emotional reaction towards, an emotional attachment. You may think that you want something, but you just don't have it because you're not good enough or whatever, but you're actually more attached to the feeling of not having it than you are to the feeling of having it. Because if you felt like you had it, you would have it. It is you. It comes from within you. You don't have to do anything to get anything. You create it. Yeah. So do that exercise. Take a minute. Look around you and feel your emotional attachment to all the things that you have, even if you think you don't like them. I don't like this apartment. I'm living in an apartment that I've been living in for a very long time. I got it Quickly, I didn't have time to apartment shop because I had left my ex and I needed a place to live. I just picked this apartment. I fucking hate it. <laughs> but I have an emotional attachment to it, which is why I haven't moved yet. The same with my current car. I have an old car from 2013. I love my car. I want a new car, but because I want a new car and I'm emotionally attached to the old one, that's why I don't have a new car. 
I'm telling myself I don't have a new car and I'm emotionally attached to my old car. No wonder I don't have a new car, right? So look around you. Look at everything you have and feel what you feel about it. Everything you're creating, you have an emotional attachment towards and you can change that today. Things happen much more quickly than you have any concept of in phase two. Appreciate yourself and feel your feelings. And with that, I'm Audi 5000. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. I hope I answered as many of your questions as possible. I'm so sorry if I didn't, if I didn't get anyone's question. Exactly, I'm a wildflower. When it's complicated, it's hard to change. When it's simple, it's just easy. You can teach others this. Yes, you're more than welcome to explain this information to other people. By all means, of course. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I love you all. Bye. I'll put this on, on YouTube eventually. <laughs> See you. Oh, wait, one more thing. Again, if anyone just popped on, uh, you can check out my ebook and my course if you want to learn more about this. I We're pricing them at an affordable rate. <laughs> affordable is a judgment. But if you want more information, check out the link in my bio. There's tons more resources there. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time, all right?